Sean Podcast Network, your team every day. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Avalanche fans, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, with another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. So on today's episode, we will be discussing more contract stuff, Uh, and this time it involves Philip Grubauer. Have things soured a little bit with the avalanche and uh grubauer things to be going in the right direction for him but uh have we now hit a brick wall when it comes to the dealings with him uh we will get to kale mccarr's season grade which the people of twitter have spoken uh loud and proud there probably could guess which direction that one went in and we will also get to quickly the avalanche sending qualifying offers to a couple of their players, which probably comes as no surprise, but we'll talk about who they are and what it means. So welcome to the latest episode. And if you are viewing on the YouTube channel, which is now up and running, thank you for viewing on that. Or if you're listening to the podcast in normal form, always appreciated there as well. But first things first, follow the show on social media outlets on Twitter, LLP and underscore avalanche. On Instagram, search for Locked On Avalanche and send questions, comments, concerns, opinions to Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. So the big news clearly is still Gabe Landeskog is uh, obviously still negotiating. We think, uh, you know, I've read some things where you were, were, they're expecting the Avalanche and Landeskog to at least have at least have one more long discussion before he hits the open market. Uh, Do I think that they will come up with anything before then? Not at all. Uh, I I think he is, he is making a beeline to Wednesday and it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if he is kind of brought back down to earth with uh, his asking price from other teams saying, no, we're not going to go there either. And if he does circle back to the avalanche, that remains to be seen. I think that's the the way we're heading, at least for Gabe Landeskog. Are we now heading that way for Philip Grubauer? That's the question. And I, I think it's the same, the same question we had with Gabe Landeskog, which we never thought we would get here. It kind of was the same question with Philip Grubauer that, you know, would we get to, would we get to the point that we're at with Landeskog? Would we get there with Grubauer? We didn't, we didn't think so. We didn't think we'd get there with Landeskog, but we are. And we didn't think we'd get there with Grubauer. And it seems like we're there. The thing with Grubauer and the abs, though, is they do seem closer on where the two groups are at, where the two camps are at. And, you know, the latest that I heard, which if you follow them, you know, there's some reports going out there. It seemed like the abs were offering five years, five million per year. And Grubauer while they didn't say term what Grubauer wanted, they kind of said he's at the $6 million age, maybe a little bit more. And right now it seems like both sides are kind of dug in where they're at, which is the same for Landeskog. It seems like both sides, when it comes to Landeskog's contract, both sides are kind of dug in. Uh, and somebody has to blink, but I really feel like Joe Sackick, when it comes to Philip Grubauer, is comfortable at five million per year, and then Grubauer sees some numbers going around for other goalies around the league, and probably wants something comparable. And for him, taking five million is still it's less than those other guys like Bennington in particular. 
and I don't think he wants to to be still the low man in that group. I think he wants to kind of lump himself in money wise with where the majority, not the the crazy contracts that are you know ten million and live in Vasilevsky money stuff like that. I think he wants what your uh, you know your your solid goalies in the league are getting, and that is between six and seven. I don't know if the Avalanche are going to go there. I mean, if logic would say one's at five, one's at six, let's do five point five and call it a day. Sometimes it's not that easy. Uh, so how firm is Sackett going to be? How firm is Grubauer going to be? I think this one before Wednesday, I think I just have a, a, a better gut feeling about this one getting done before Wednesday and before Grubauer would hit the open market uh, because he's, he's interesting. You know, like we were saying, like he had a very good season, an excellent season. And is that six to $7 million money for, for the one season that he did very well? I don't know. I, I He thinks so, but I don't think the Avalanche are there yet. But this is his unrestricted free agent contract. This is the one where guys want to really cash in as much as they can, which is why Landis Gog is asking for so much. Grubauer is not going as high as, as uh, Landis Gog. He's not going to get that from anybody, and that's the difference. Landis Gog could get what he's asking at that high price somewhere. And I think the same for Grubauer. If Grubauer is asking for in between six and seven, I think there's some team out there, maybe that's goalie desperate, that goes that route. But I, I don't know where where people are at and how they're thinking about this. You know, there, there's two sides to the Landeskog negotiations, and people are taking a side. People are taking Landeskog's side, saying he is our captain, pay him whatever the heck he wants. And then there's other people that are like, you can't do that. You have a cap and you have to be mindful of that cap. And yes, while we appreciate everything Gabe Landeskog has done for us, he needs to be a little bit more reasonable and understand the times of the NHL and come down a little bit. And the same goes for the Grubauer and Sakic negotiations. Maybe not so much. Maybe there's not so, as many people in the Grubauer side as there are the Landeskog Land side. But there's people out there saying like, yeah, he had a great year. I think you need to pay him. And it's the same thing. I think Joe Sackick and company are very calculated in this. I think they, ha- they have absolutely crunched the numbers. And they know exactly the most that they can offer these guys. And they're not going to cross that especially now that you have signed Kale McCarr to that big deal and he's taken 9 million right off the top. So, you know, you know what you're working with and, and that's why I don't think Joe Sackick and the front office of the avalanche are going to move that much. This is a hard cap. They, they are up against a strict cap. They're up against a flat cap. So I don't think they move that much, and I think they are completely content. They don't want to. They definitely don't want to, but I think they are content if Landeskog walks because of the money and if Grubauer walks because of the money. I think uh, you know the front office is confident in what they have done in the past in signing guys and finding those free agents and, and making moves and the prospect pool they have to bring guys up or make trades. I think they're happy with what they can fill in for these roles. That's that's dangerous. It's very dangerous because these are two players that a lot of people are are kind of supporting from the fan base. And you're going to have to find guys that perform immediately. Because if they don't, y- you might have a mini riot on your hands from the fan base. Because they know what they're getting with Landis Gog. And Grubauer, they know it. They, for the most part, they know what they're getting for them from those two guys. And if you let them walk, and the people that you bring in don't produce at that level, it's not going to be fun. So, uh, with free agency right around the corner, we'll find out. I do. I just, uh, you know, gut feeling. 
I kind of just because you know the numbers that you're hearing between Grubauer and the front office are a little bit closer. You kind and you know, Grubauer said over and over he wants to stay. Uh, I, I just have a gut feeling that gets done. Landeskog, I don't think it's done till uh, you know after Wednesday, if at all. Uh, he would have to really test the market and maybe be told by multiple teams you're asking too much, and then maybe he comes back. But all he needs is one team to give him what he wants. And, and you know, if that team's not a contender, then he has a big decision to make. All right, let's hear from rockauto.com. And with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brands their warehouse happens to carry? You have a computer and access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. It is a family-run business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices at Rock Auto are reliably low for every customer. So go explore their easy-to-use website today. Find the solution to your auto parts needs. RockAuto.com. Go to RockAuto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us section so they know that we sent you to them Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. So we talked about Kale McCarr, obviously, with his big contract, and it just so happened that he was up for his season grade. And if you're new to this, uh, we do, after the season is over, we give each player on the Avs an A, B, C, D, or F grade. We go alphabetically. And it just so happened to turn out that when Mikhail McCarr signed his big contract, he was also up for his Twitter season grade, which is just as important as the $9 million he's making every year. Um, so on Twitter, so when, you know, again, it's like I said, if you're new to this, you vote, comment in the section, I'll read the comments. And yeah, this one went the way that you expected it to. A D or F, nobody voted on that, which I'm always happy to see that because you always get those people that try to be cute. Um, and that's not cute. That's that just is dumb. Even though I don't know who it would be. It's anonymous. Um, I I'm guessing if you vote a DRF or camel car, you probably can't sleep at night. So, uh, nobody did, but you did get 2% of the people voting C. And again, I think for almost everybody, I think you can think for Nathan McKinnon, he had a couple people, uh, a couple percentage points for C. I think it's just the way the season ended. I think a lot of people are holding a lot of weight for the the playoffs, and because it was just you know, four after they won the two games, four games in a row losing to Vegas, it didn't sit well with people. So I'm assuming the two percent of people who voted for him was because of his uh, playoff and against Vegas, which I didn't think was that horrible. Uh, most of the players on the Avalanche didn't do a great job, but he was, I wouldn't say he did a great job, but he didn't do, do a horrible job. I mean, we can point out the guys that did do a horrible job. He wasn't one of them. Uh, but 2% for C, 7% for B, and 91% for A. Uh, that is the highest right now for the most discrepancy in, in poll voting. I think McKinnon was 87% A. But 91% uh, wins. It might have happened that this poll was up the day or two. No, the day after he signed it, two days after he signed it. So maybe giving people some incentive to go vote A and say he's worthy of uh, that $9 million per. So, uh, yeah, some of the comments Lothar actually says uh, someone gave him a C. Give me a break. That person should watch a different sport. I agree with you, Lothar. Uh, but he continues says, Kale McCarr is the number one D-man for the abs. Despite him missing games, he ended up statistically with a goal per game. He's only 22 years old. And at the beginning of a hopefully Hall of Fame career, uh, always fascinating to watch him. No question, straight A. Uh, I mean, if we want to put him in the Hall of Fame right now, I, I have no problem against that. He's definitely trending that direction, but he is 22. <clears throat> so let's... Um, I mean, 
I don't want to throw too much pressure on the guy, but you know, Hall, Hall of Fame. If you want to start talking about that right now, be my guest. I won't stop you. <clears throat> uh, Rebecca, there's no one to compare him to. He he is Makar. Very solid defensively, incredibly talented offensively, and his puck and skating skills are pure finesse. He's had some defensive lapses, but I expect those to be reduced in time. Um, all true, <clears throat> and I would put an emphasis on his skating skills. The edge work of this dude is just... I've never seen anything like it to be blunt. Uh, he, I, I've told many people like, I, I, it's, it's amazing. He has ankles. He, there's times where he just makes a cut that you're just like, how, how are you? I mean, you're, you're breaking the other guy's ankles. How are you not breaking, breaking yours? It's just incredible to watch him skate. I've never seen uh, anybody at any position skate the way Kale McCarr skates. It's awesome. Uh, Jordan G at abs fan 2909 says another no brainer. And Jordan has voted on every single one of these. Um, says McCarr gets an a plus from me. He's clearly one of our best players. He's so dynamic and a threat at both ends of the ice. He doesn't really have any weaknesses in his game. Uh, I'm really happy. He signed the new long-term deal with the abs. He deserves it. Uh, and as I've said before, and I'll say it again, McCarr ceiling is potentially of potential is sky high. It's absolutely scary to think of how high it really is. He's far from his prime and he's already this good. That's so true. <clears throat> Hasn't even reached his prime and he's already, uh, you know, pushing for a, a Norris trophy, which God, he's got to get that soon. <laughs> you know, if, as long as he <clears throat> doesn't miss uh, a, a lot of games, which is what caused it him to lose it this year. Plain and simple, which I think is a little bit bogus, but that's what caused him to lose it this year. So don't miss any games and you got your Norris trophy. Uh, who else? We <laughs> um, <clears throat> who is this guy? Colorado avalanche. What's the, uh, Oh, at, uh, at abs hockey Two. Uh, just put the A plus 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 up there. So you gotta love that. Um, at ten underscore cents, that anyone that votes less than an A is a narc, and there are some people that have done that. So, um, and all of the abs things says to the person that gave him a C, I forgive you. So you're all loving here in the avalanche land. So <clears throat> for me, easy A. Um, I was, I was talking to uh, Gary. Some of you guys know Gary through the green room episodes that we do. And um, he was doing some graphics and stuff for a website that he works for. And he asked me who my favorite player was. And, and I told him like, I don't, as I've gotten older, I don't really have, I there's n nobody like I tag as a favorite player. You know, when you're a kid, like you had a favorite player and you had your the poster on your wall, um, you know, growing up, for football, it was it was definitely John Elway. It was definitely Terrell Davis. Uh, in hockey, it was definitely Sackick. Forsberg is my favorite hockey player of all time. Um, so easily the, my favorite avalanche player of all time. But as I've gotten older, I've gotten away from having favorite players. I don't know. I just I, I'm more of the, the team guy. Like I, I want to see the team do well. And I don't care who plays for that team. It's almost like when Tebow was uh, quarterbacking for the Broncos and they're going to the off season. And my friends were asking me, Oh, do you want Tebow to return? And I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> like if he does, if he's wearing a Broncos helmet, I'm rooting for him. Uh, and I think because I, I am that way, because you know what we're going through right now with, with Gabe Landeskog, you know, players move around. There's no, loyalty really anymore to a team or a franchise. And I understand it. You know, I get, I get why guys, you know, they, they want to cash in with, you know, they're a, a big contract. Uh, and that's just the way sports are right now. And, and even though Gabe Landeskog wants to stay, I'm getting to a point here, by the way, don't worry about it. Even though Gabe Landeskog wants to stay, uh, you know, he, he wants a, a certain dollar amount. And if he doesn't want it, he potentially walks. And that's where we are with sports. Uh, you know, you they're, they're very seldom do you have those guys like an Alex Ovechkin 
uh, in baseball, like Derek Jeter, guys that you knew were not going to not chasing the money are loyal to a franchise, are loyal to the city. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm not there with, with Kale McCarr. I mean, he's, he was restricted free agent. He's 22 years old. He wasn't going anywhere for this contract. We'll see what happens when he's a unrestricted free agent. <clears throat> but anyway, the point I'm making here is his style of play. I absolutely love. So while I don't have a, a favorite player, he's as close to a favorite player of mine that I can have right now. And Nathan McKinnon, clearly. Uh, but but what Kale McCarr can do at the young age that he is at is <laughs> damn impressive. And uh, and on top of that, a big thing for me, what I look for in, in kind of quote unquote favorite players is personality. And he just seems like a down to earth kid that just enjoys hockey and just imp- enjoys playing the game. And he does seem dedicated to the avalanche right now. You know, again, we will see what happens when unrestricted free agency comes around. Uh, but we, who knows, are we going to run into another situation where the abs are strapped and they can only offer this much and he moves on somewhere that is so far down the road. Um, you know, it's, it's not an issue right now for me. But when uh, Gary asked me that, I was like, yeah, I, I don't have a favorite player anymore the way sports are structured. But if you're going to hold my feet to the fire and say, you know, you have to pick a favorite player, I think it would be Kale McCarr. It's a, a ton of fun watching this guy play. And I'm just happy we got him for at least another six years. <clears throat> All right. BetOnline.ag, let's hear from them. Um, BetOnline, it's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Baseball season is in full swing, and you can track all of that action on BetOnline. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including baseball, basketball, hockey, and all your UFC and MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to BetOnline on your laptop or mobile device. Check out all the great sporting news sign-up bonuses, contest information. When you head to the website or you can use your mobile device, you can sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with the promo code locked on. It's betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Okay, so last bit of news here. The Avalanche did send qualifying offers to... Uh, Timmons, Gilbert, and Jost. Nothing really surprising there. Um, and for qualifying offers, basically that means they're they're retaining the right, their restricted rights is basically what they're doing. And uh, a qualifying offer is a one-year deal. That player can either accept that qualifying offer and they, they play on it. And it's all based on what you made last year. And there's categories that you fall within. And if you accept it, you make 10% more. Or if it's over a million dollars, you make the exact same amount. Whatever. That that doesn't matter. The the bottom line is qualifying offers are one-year deals. They can accept or not accept. If they don't accept, then you become the restricted free agent that you were. And I think for Tyson Jost and Timmons, I actually think for all three of these guys, they, they probably deny the qualifying offer. Who knows what Gilbert will do, but I think the two big ones are obviously Timmons and Jost. Jost definitely will. Timmons, in all likelihood, will. And then they become restricted free agents, but the rights are retained by the Avalanche. And, you know, then they have offer, uh, they write a first refusal if anybody wants to send a offer to them and the Avalanche would get something in return. I don't think any of that's going to happen with these guys. I think they're staying put. Tyson Jost is staying put. Uh, Connor Timmons definitely is. And, and Dennis Gilbert definitely is. Now it just gets into money. And even those, these are, these are guys that are not, uh, you know, going to make the money that someone like Grubauer and Landis are going to make. It's still important to know the amount that they are going to make when they refuse these, uh, then they have to negotiate. And, you know, Tyson Joseph might, might want a little bit of an increase, but how much he didn't, he didn't even crack $1 million last year. He's probably going to do that this year, but how much does he get? How much term does he get? Connor Timmons will probably be on the lower end. 
I can't imagine Connor, T- Connor Timmons would accept it. I can't, I can't imagine he would. There's, I, don't, I just don't see that happening. Um, but I don't think he's going to soak up a lot of cap money. Tyson Jones would be interesting. Um, you know, a really good season last year ended up in with the avalanche, uh, protecting him. So he's got some, something to go on and demand a little bit more. He didn't have that last year, which is why he signed that one year deal. So he has a little bit more to go on for, for this year to say, Hey, like, uh, throw a little bit more scratch my way. So we'll see, we'll see how those play out, but that's kind of the news in avalanche land for qualifying offers. And then there's a handful of players who did not receive qualifying offers. I don't think I have that in front of me, but, um, yeah, then that's um, on them if they want to go somewhere else. Uh, so that's really going to be it for today, everybody. So uh, thank you for tuning in. And once again, definitely follow the show on uh, social media and now on YouTube. Just search for Locked on Avalanche and you'll find it. Um, so we will uh, we'll see. Free agency, unrestricted free agency starts very soon. If anything happens, we will definitely cover it here. So follow me on social media, LOPN underscore avalanche uh, or the hockey writers. If anything happens there, I'll probably be writing something up for that. And uh, that'll be it for today, everybody. Thank you for tuning in as always. And we'll be back tomorrow with any new avalanche news, talk, or potential signings. We'll be here to talk about it. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Here's Jovi.